How many guys does it take to take a light bulb out of a package? Oh! <laughs> Just kidding. Welcome back to another episode of Rob Built, coming at you late, just like the good old days. Today, Rob Mob, we are gonna be talking about, wow, that, that was really fast. Today we're gonna be talking about, and today, Rob Mob, we are going to be talking about how to increase bookings in your short-term rental properties all across your entire portfolio. And I've got six juicy, spicy, delectable, marinated, tenderized, seasoned to perfection tips on how to do that. But before we get into today's lessons, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to today's sponsor, Booking.com. But a little bit more on them later. Ooh, he's just a wee bit, a little bit of the Booking.com. <laughs> Let's get into tip number one. Tip number one, go and take professional photos of the seasonality that your short-term rental might be facing. If the market that you're in tends to have pretty significant seasonality, as in in the summer, if it's very hot and very bright, maybe take sunset photos and those are your hero shots for most of the year. But if it snows in the winter and if it snows a lot, you should go in and take professional photos of what your listing looks like in the snow. Why? Because whenever people are in the holiday spirit, they wanna play in the snow, but they also wanna avoid eating odd colored snow. But most importantly, they want to go and cozy up and hang out in your house and be in blankets. And so if you really want to stand out from your competition, think about it from the perspective of your guest. If they're looking between two Airbnbs that are somewhat identical and it's December, let's say it's holiday time, Christmas is around the corner. Do you think they're going to choose the Airbnb with nice golden hour sunset photography, which is most of the time very good? Or do you think they're going to choose the house that's been powdered by snow where the owner actually went the extra mile and built a snowman in front of the house and took a photo of that snowman? I would. And I've been shouting from the rooftops lately that short-term rentals are an experience and experiences sell and that's how you're gonna stand out moving forward and some of you are probably thinking love this idea Rob but it doesn't actually snow where my short-term rental is located I got you covered this is actually a super easy tip for people to implement and that is decorate the interior of your short-term rental with holiday decor this is something I've done in the past you can empower your cleaners you can pay them a little bit extra send them a Christmas tree send them some stockings send them some garland to actually set up in your house you can go all out in just one room if you want specifically the living room and deck it out in holiday gear and don't take cell phone photos. Hire a photographer, pay him a couple hundred bucks to come and update those photos for you. I promise you this little touch really means a lot to guests and you're not just gonna benefit from a juicier Christmas booking, you're gonna benefit from extra bookings from about mid-November when people start getting in the holiday spirit all the way through New Year's, which gives you about six weeks to really take advantage and soak in increased average daily rates. All of this could be done for less than 500 bucks and I'm a big believer that you'll see a return on investment on that. Tip number two. Give a discount. What, Rob, a discount? I've been following your channel for years and you always say never give a discount. That is true. I'm very anti-discount on the Rob Built channel. However, one point of clarification is needed and I am anti-discount whenever the guest asks for the discount first. When a guest reaches out to me and they say, hey, I'd like to book your place. Will you give me a 70% discount? I'm like, no, I would never do that because those always end up being the most horrible guests. However, I am perfectly fine giving a discount if I am the one offering it first. And I'll tell you what I mean. Oftentimes people come to me and they say, hey Rob, I think I have a pretty good listing. I've taken all your advice, but for some reason, all I can do is book my Fridays through Sundays or my Thursdays through Sundays, but my Monday through Thursday is a ghost town. How can I fill those bookings? Most of the time the advice out there given is, hey, you might just be a weekend short-term rental, meaning if you want to book Monday through Thursday, you just have to lower your prices. And that's obviously a strategy you can implement, but there's a strategy I've been working on with some of my host camp students. And a lot of them have actually been seeing great success. And what they'll do is if they have a guest checking in from let's say Thursday to Sunday, they will reach out to that guest the week of the reservation and offer them a 50% discount on the day before and the day after their stay. So if a guest is checking in on Thursday, we would send them a message that says, hey Nancy, I see that you're checking in on Thursday. However, I just wanted to let you know that my Wednesday is actually still open. And if your group could accommodate coming a day earlier, I'd be more than happy to extend a 50% discount on Wednesday. Now it doesn't have to be 50%. I would say maybe 30 to 50%. I just personally don't think you're gonna have a huge conversion if it's just a 30% discount because it's like, mm. It's pretty nice, but I think I'll stick with what I have. But if people are paying you 500 bucks a night and you offer them 50% off, making that extra night only $250, and that's a deal that might make them say, all right, let me go talk to my group. Hey guys, we're getting this extra day for 50% off. What do you think? Yes, 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 yes. And bam, you book this, maybe for less money than you would have made if you had booked it with someone else. However, you're keeping it in the same group. You're only gonna have to turn over that Airbnb one extra time. It makes your management actually a little bit easier. Now let's say that you don't actually have the day before open. What do you do in that case? 
Well, you would actually just offer them a 50% discount on the back end of the reservation. So let's say on Sunday, they're supposed to check out. You would reach out to them and say, hey, I hope you're enjoying your stay. I just wanted to let you know that my Sunday is still open. And if it works for you, I'd love to extend your stay by a day and give you a 50% discount on that extra day. What do you think? Great, you've now just offered someone a big discount, you've made them happy. And by this point, if they stayed at your property for two or three days, if they drove in, then they are likelier to extend their stay. All right, tip number three, diversify where you get your bookings from. Now, as in don't go all in on one single platform. This is something I've learned the hard way over the last year. And I'm gonna be the first one to tell you guilty. All right, when I first started in short-term rentals, I was really focusing on one platform and it took me a while before I even considered going onto another platform. But I just sort of realized that when you go all in on one single platform, you kind of lose control of your business and it's best to figure out other places where you can list your short-term rental because ultimately, if you can go from making 100% of your bookings from here versus making 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20% on a bunch of different platforms, you're just gonna be way better off. You're gonna be casting a wider marketing net, reaching so many new groups of people that you never would have reached unless you had diversified. Which brings me to today's sponsor, Booking.com. I wanted to tell you a quick story here of something that actually happened to me within the last year, which is actually the whole origin of this video topic in a way. Many of you know that I bought a motel in the Adirondacks in New York. We've been remodeling that motel, making it nice, making it beautiful. But during that entire remodel, we've still been running the motel as a business. We had still been running that motel as a business and we were actually getting a majority of our bookings from our direct booking website, which was great. But then as we got out of the busy season, our booking started to slow down and we went to the drawing board and we asked ourselves, how can we get more bookings at our motel? So we came up with this brilliant idea of instead of just getting all of our bookings from our direct booking website, we should diversify where we list our motel. And guess what? We ended up listing our motel that we're currently converting into a short-term rental boutique experience on booking.com. And bookings actually increased because we actually ended up getting 20% of our reservations from booking.com. So after getting instantaneous results, it got me thinking, what would happen if I listed my entire 40 unit portfolio on booking.com? And that's what we're currently working to do because it's just a super no brainer way to increase bookings. It's actually super easy to do and you can actually set up your property listing quickly with booking.com's 15 minute registration flow. And I promise you it's not a wasted effort because 45% of partners get their first booking within the first week of listing with booking.com's partner onboarding program. And trust me, as a seasoned short-term rental host, I know that when jumping to new platforms, you're probably asking, well, what kind of protections do I have? With booking.com, you actually get protection from liability claims from guests and neighbors up to $1 million per reservation. So you got some good coverage there. And the moral of the story here, folks, diversify where you get your reservations from, which is exactly why you should consider listing on booking.com. Highly recommend, I've experienced the platform, it works, go do it, go make more money. And of course, thanks to booking.com for sponsoring this video. Now back to the video. All right, tip number four, remarketing to your guests. What does this mean? Typically for a long time, the way short-term rentals worked was guest checks into your property, they stay at your property, they leave at your property, and you never hear from them again, which I really think is a huge missed opportunity in this industry. What you should be doing is figuring out how to capture their data, ethically of course, but how can you get a hold of their email or their phone number so that you can reach out to them from time to time to remind them to come stay at your place, to provide them with a discount. Again, I'm okay providing a discount to a returning guest because I'm the one offering it. And if they've stayed at my property, I know in theory they've taken care of it unless my cleaner personally reached out to me to say, hey, they nasty. Now, how can you actually go about getting their information? There are a lot of different ways to do this, but one simple way would be creating a QR code sticker that you put on the dining room table. And maybe on that QR code sticker, it says, hey, scan this code for a discount on your next stay. They scan it, it takes them to a splash page. Maybe the headline says something like, hey, get 20% off of your next day. When you fill out the form down below, they type in their name, their phone number, their email, and you can pop that email into a CRM, a customer relationship manager, or you could use some kind of email service like MailChimp. That's a throwback right there. MailChimp.com. If you collect enough emails every month, you can build a giant list and always be cranking out email campaigns to get people to come back. There are Wi-Fi devices out there that you can hook up to your modem that will basically make it so that a guest has to put in their email so that they can log into the Wi-Fi, much like most of us have ever done at hotels. You go to the hotel, you go to the Wi-Fi, you have to fill out a little form, and then guess what? You get a thousand emails. For one day they send you a discount, you're like, yeah, sure, I'll go back. That's the general premise of remarketing to your customers. If you think about it this way, even with the little Wi-Fi modem trick that I just told you, if you think about it, you're not just getting one email, you're getting the email of every single person that stays at your property that connects to Wi-Fi. So if you have a property that sleeps 10 people and you get seven reservations per month, that's 70 emails that you're getting per month times 12 is 84? No, maybe, maybe it is 84. Ha! Huh. 
are the champion, my friends. Six and a half hours later. Now the world and scene. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next episode of Robo. Bye. Woo. Okay, just kidding. 84. Is that what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Oh wait a minute. <laughs> that math is completely wrong. It's seven times. <laughs> Wait, no, 70 times 12. 840, 840, 70 times 12, 840. I was close. I was just off by the zero. Leave me alone. 840 emails is what I'm getting at here. Imagine if you have 10 listings, that's 8,400 emails. If you have 20 listings, it's 1,680 emails, probably. Uh, let's go back to the 840 though. Just run the numbers here. If you can get 5% of your list to convert, that's 42 people. And let's say that you got them to come back for three days. That's 126 days total at, let's say, average nightly rate of 200 bucks. It's an extra $25,000 that you could add in your revenue. And that's just kind of showing you the power of numbers, right? That's like a very arbitrary, like means nothing. But the idea is if you have a lot of customers, you feed them down the email marketing funnel, you get them to convert, they come back, they're repeat guests. And then you can also get them to stay at other properties in your portfolio. So the amount of money you can make from just this tactic is honestly, the sky's the limit here. Tip number five is gonna be a little in line with tip number one, which is like the updated photography. I see a really big trend coming up in 2024 for lifestyle photography. I think there's something very enchanting and magical and endearing about having people in the photography of your short-term rental. Now I'm gonna say this, there's a very fine line between horrible lifestyle photography and good lifestyle photography. So be very careful, tread lightly. Make sure that you're hiring a qualified photographer for this type of thing. But the general premise here is that if you can have people in your photos laughing, smiling, having a beer, whatever, it gives your short-term rental a little bit of life and it makes the potential buyer or booker of your short-term rental think, oh, that's cool, they're having a good time. I could see my family having a good time there. I've actually recently started experimenting with lifestyle photography. I'll show some here on the screen. And this is of my property in Crystal Beach, Texas. I built a mini golf course in the backyard and obviously the mini golf course itself is super awesome, but I wanted to show people having a good time, so I took a photo of my wife, her best friend, my kid, and then I think it looks pretty good. Granted, I'm gonna say, I'm the one that took the photos, it wasn't a professional photographer. I'd actually like to have a professional photographer come in, like Barker Studios, who takes photos for so many of my Airbnbs, but in the interim, I actually think these are pretty good, and I've seen an increase in bookings. I can't attribute it 100% to the lifestyle, because obviously the mini golf course is doing a lot of the heavy lifting, but I think it's a pretty killer combo to have experience with lifestyle coming together. Which brings me to tip number six, Six, which is having a standout amenity at your short-term rental. What I mean by this, what is an amenity that you can have that is a one-of-a-kind amenity that your competition can't compete with? Now, it doesn't have to be one-of-a-kind, but it, it helps, right? What is something that you have to offer that makes your short-term rental irresistible compared to all the other short-term rentals that are flooding the market? For me in Crystal Beach, that was a mini golf course, or in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, which was this treehouse deck that I built 10 to 12 feet off the ground with the view of the Smoky Mountains, or in Scottsdale, Arizona, my triple pickleball court that cost me $22,000 to put in and increase my revenue significantly. Last November, my revenue was 13,500 bucks. I spent $22,000 on this pickleball court. This last November that we just finished, I grossed 39,000 bucks. So that amenity alone paid for itself in one month. And this is such an important concept that I'm really gonna be hammering for a very, very long time, forever, because so many short-term rental hosts want to just buy the next short-term rental. They're chasing cash flow. They're trying to get more doors, but they're not focusing on the current portfolio that they have and maximizing the revenue that they can make on one single property. So for me, the way I think of it is, why would I go buy another property if there's still a lot of money to be made in the properties that I own? And that's how you should be thinking about this too. How can you reinvest back into your property to make you more money? That's the question that you should be asking yourself for every single property in your portfolio before you ever think about buying a new property. I feel like I got really sassy there. Before you ever think about buying a new property, okay? All right, so those are my six tips. I hope they help. They've helped me. I've made more money doing these things. These are things that I'm trying, I'm experimenting, they're working, I wanna share them with you, I hope you can make more money, and I hope you'll catch me on the next episode of Rob Built. And lastly, I just wanna say thanks again to Booking.com for sponsoring this video. It really means the world, and helps this channel run. So everybody, go try Booking.com, and uh, I'll catch you guys soon, like on the next episode, next, next week, next Monday, really, bye.